plant looks like it lacks water. Um, but those are mites. And you can get rid of those with any um, insecticide spray. Now, <coughs> here's the scoop on organic. Um, I have, well, th there are certain things that we cannot grow organically here. I mean, we would love to do it, but tomatoes are one of them uh, because we have so much rain. But um, you can read on the internet about uh, a combination of alcohol, just plain rubbing alcohol in water, so that if you spray it on insects, it will immediately kill them <coughs> on contact. But it will not kill the eggs. And then, supposedly, if you mix cinnamon with that mixture, it will become an insecticide and a fungicide. Now, we, grow, we sell a lot of organic uh, insecticides and fungicides at Scotland Yard. Um, and if you look at the contents, the ingredients, it does say cinnamon on there. So that is a natural kind of uh, fungicide that you can use. I can't guarantee that it will work. Also, mint. You want to mix a little bit of the herb in the bed. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a very hardy herb. Mm -hmm. you don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it keeps it for some reason or other the insects don't like it. Mm -hmm. It's just a deterrent. Good. Yeah. And you hear sometimes the same thing about marigolds. Yes. yes, I don't mix it. But Japanese beetles, oh, they're monsters. <laughs> yeah. and, and also, when you plant your dahlias, you probably want to use some snail and slug bait um, because they can eat the bulbs and the stem and the leaves and everything. And so all of a sudden, your plant's gone before you even know about it. So be sure to, to plant with snail and slug bait. <laughs> it does like <laughs> We have some hungry little monsters in this area. Okay, let me get... Can you see them on the backs of the leaves? You can see mealybugs uh, on the backs of leaves, and anything that's on the underside of the leaves is parasitic. Um, I, I don't know that you can see spider mites. You can see the evidence of the spider mites, but not necessarily the spider mites themselves. Because they're tiny, tiny. Okay. Uh, okay, snails and slugs, we've got that. Okay, so now we've got this beautiful plant. We've got it all shaped, and it's blooming. So what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with the, the uh, bulb? Uh, when it, it, we're going to wait until after the first frost. Um, and when the when it dies down, that's probably going to be sometime in November. Um, should we dig dahlias? Well, yes and no. I have a dahlia in my front flower garden that I haven't dug in years, and it does just fine. But it's protected. In this area, anytime the ground freezes, Low, six inches below the ground, which it will here usually, um, your dahlias are not going to make it. So what you need to do is to dig them. Now I would prefer to dig them um, in the fall, and you wait until after the frost, and you cut the stalk to about six <coughs> inches, and then you very carefully with a, a, a digging fork or whatever get the bulb out. I don't. I would not separate them until the spring, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But what you want to do is store them in um, an area where it doesn't get too hot and it doesn't get too cold. If it gets too hot, your dahlia bulbs will shrivel. Um, and if it gets too cold, they'll rot. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, your garage. Yeah, your garage is good. Yeah, anything that will, for a basement. I cannot believe one time I put that Exactly a hard freeze, but when it gets cold, it's going to make the, the fruit sweeter. Um, but when you when you store your dahlias, what you want to do is line your container, which might be an old garbage can from somewhere, line it with newspaper, and then go and buy um, the cedar shavings or something similar, mm -hmm. yeah, or straw or whatever, and then you know pack wood shavings fine, 
um, put a layer, but not not in the spring, no mulch in the spring, um, because it contains too much nitrogen. Yeah. Um, but um, put a layer on top of your straw or whatever, and then put more straw, and then put another layer, so that they're not going to get wet and rot. Mm -hmm. What's the oh. red liquid? The Hummer. Oh, does it? <laughs> <laughs> totally confused. <laughs> you can't get through it. No, can't get to the bottle. Yeah. Um, but anyway, store them in a dry, a cool, dry place. I would not divide your dahlias until the spring. And the reason I wouldn't do it is because <coughs> the, the eyes start to come out in the spring and you can tell where an eye is. And if you if you divide your dahlias with one, only one eye, that's really the best way to do it because the, the tuber is concentrating less on the um, plant than it is just sending up the, the, the one stem okay and then you can start shaping it <coughs> um, if you like I did or have done if you leave your um, your your bulb in the ground over the winter and you're going to leave it there you're not going to replant it or dig it up when you do dig it up it is a big clump like this just wash the dirt off of it let it dry for a day and then take a knife with a serrated edge and cut it in half and then cut it in quarters best way to do it um, and you only want a, a stem, you know, I told you leave the stem of about six inches when you dig it up. Well, you, when you, you only want the stem to be about an inch when you're, you're dividing your bulbs. And the, if you have um, eyes already coming up, you can divide it like that with a sharp knife. Uh, just take one, one part of the, the, the bulb with an eye in it and that'll make a beautiful plant. It doesn't seem like it would, but it does. <coughs> I'm curious to know, I don't get to stay till the frost, mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, so I sometimes try to go ahead and take them up, even though they haven't been through the shock mm -hmm. of the first freeze. And um, this was the same year that I put them down in the basement under furniture, mm -hmm. and 50 percent or more of them survived. And I'm just curious to know what you think might have happened. Yeah. Well, I, I think you're going to get, I mean, it's like the survival of the, the fittest, is. yeah, okay. but um, w when you when you dig your dahlias up before the first frost, they're still green, mm -hmm. the bulbs are still green, and I keep calling them bulbs, I, I, I learned this, it's not a bulb, it's a tuber, uh, because the, it's thin skin, yeah, so, um, so, so the freeze causes the skin to get a little bit um, thicker on the tuber? It, it kills, I mean, it, it deadens it. It puts it into um, yeah, a dormant state. Yeah. So if we have to dig them up earlier, because we're not here to dig them up in November, I mean, is there anything special we should do or it's just... Well, I think it's, it depends on where you have them planted. You'll have a better rate of survival if you put plastic over the soil um, before you leave and then put like pine needles or some kind of mulch or something on top of the plastic because it will they might stay through the winter they might the stay soil. through the winter if you do that in the soil yeah so that you're not getting that water going down is that what you're saying yes and and it freezes right and now dahlias need a lot of water but we have so much water here that that's one of the things i wouldn't follow directions on it says you're gonna you know get your sprinkler out and water 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 well here no 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 um, because we get water 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 you know coming from another direction so it's not um it's necessary to um, <coughs> keep your values unless they're in a pot on your back deck and we haven't had rain in quite some time okay anything else yes when you cut the flower is there any way to pull along the blossom yes um you put it in very hot water, 160 to 180 degrees, and um, let it stay for an hour until the water cools off. Mm -hmm. And then you take it out, and um, that will prolong it for about four or five days. Hmm. Is that <coughs> just the stem or the blossom? The no, whole the stem. Just okay, the stem. thank you. Yeah. Put it in hot water, and you don't change it back top. You just leave it in there. And let the water cool. Let the water and cool. Let it cool. And then take it out and put it in a flower arrangement or whatever you want. It'll last like four or five days extra. When you mention not too warm and not too cold to store it, what range of temperature were you talking about? Um, 
40 to 60. Fertilizer be okay to use? Um, little yellow pebbles. Oh, the Osmocote slow release. Mm -hmm. um, you can, but again, Osmocote has nitrogen in it, and so what you, you don't want to use nitrogen on dahlias. Oh, you want to get the, that high, that high middle number. How often okay. should be fertilized? Do what? How often should be fertilized? Well, you should fertilize them um, when they're about a foot and a half tall. And what I would do, this is real strong stuff and it burns. And so I would take a teaspoon and come out maybe a, a, about a foot to a foot and a half from the root, the, the, the roots and dig a little hole with a spoon and put about a teaspoon full of su triple superphosphate in there. Um, if I've never done it in a container, uh -huh. I have tried it this year. And so what soil would be best? Okay, <clears throat> I think the handout that I have says um, two thirds just garden soil and one third potting soil that has never been treated with anything. Now that'd be a trick. <laughs> um, because, and I don't think people sell peat moss anymore. I don't think you should use that anyway. But um, you'd have to get some kind of potting soil that would help to retain some of the water that has maybe a little bit of vermiculite or perlite in it. Um, but the potting soil um, <coughs> we sell, and again, you don't want to go to the compost, like that kind of thing, because it's a it lot, and also nitrogen. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it just stays. You don't want to compost on the top of it or in the mix? Anywhere. So when, when you bring this into the foot and a half, then you fertilize them at all the time? Again, during the season? Yes. Yeah. Like every six weeks, every so <laughs> be, between a month and six weeks. Yeah, I'm yeah. reading the direction to fertilize them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't know the answer to that question. Um, <clears throat> so maybe I look nicer than I thought. Thank you, Wait till we find this. Uh, uh, yeah, I think what you have to do is just go looking. Yeah. You know, well, the lowest number maybe, or the yeah, uh, what we and, and see and see if it's been treated in any yeah. way. Mm -hmm. um, the potting soil that we sell has a little bit of uh, fertilizer to get yeah. plants started, sure. um, so it has been treated. And I think we probably have some other soil there, but I just have never read it. Mm -hmm. so. What I do is I mix yours. With, you can buy peat moss, and I'm not a big peat moss proponent either, but you can get it at Tractor Supply. And you can also mix it with Coir, C-O-I-R, which is a sustainable product made from coconut hulls. And I have some little chunks of that. It's really great stuff. And we tried to get that for your little display down yeah. here, and we couldn't get it. I've got two little chunks here, <laughs> which will share our source. But it really is interesting because then you can mix. But I love her potting soil mix. We we bathe in it. We just run through big sacks of that stuff, and it's really excellent. So I think if you just mix it with something else that stretches it, that's fine. Or we just use it straight. So I love it. And um, Lynn, could you share with us sort of how Scotland Yard chooses the 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 dahlias that they do, maybe this year or the future years, based on your client needs and also how you pot them up, that kind of thing? Okay, I have absolutely nothing to do with that. Ah, okay. But I will try to, but I will in the future. I, I will just try to tell you. Um, it's based on previous year's sales and mm -hmm. the dahlias that were the, the most popular. Um, and the same thing with size. Um, and the size, like these, um, I, I just wouldn't buy anything like that. I, I mean, I hate to, to miss a sale here, but that is so lanky and so tall that I just wouldn't want that to plant that of that size in my garden. But some people, especially the landscapers in the area, want to plant something that has an immediate show for, yeah, for their clients. And so they'll come in and get like 30 or something. Um, so in that case, I guess it's okay. And, and you know, they'll stake them and use the, um, the, the green bamboo stakes all around them so that you don't really see that they've been staked. They've been staked. Um, awesome. But that's primarily for landscapers and, and for their clients. It's not necessarily a good thing for us. But no, it's based on, on sales. And I want to go back just a minute and tell you something interesting that I learned.